Hello Rachel, it's Friday, June 22nd. This video is going to respond to certain things that you probably didn't think I would respond to and probably don't want me to respond to from your last video, but I'm going to respond to them anyways. I am going to start my little discussion-y thingy. Okay, so you talked about Manny Sangi and you read from that book, which said something about um, like him like, you know, played some of the same time as Johnny Bench and talked about, like, Manny being, you know, just as good as the catcher, etc., etc. So, I am going to talk about my opinion on that. And I think that's what the book said anyways. Um, it was a little bit hard to hear and the video froze for unknown reasons. So, but I'm just going to talk about it now. So basically, I'm just going to list a bunch of stats and things. Okay, so, Manny Sing Ian. Uh, played for 13 years, um, three of those years, only three of those years for less than half a season, full season being 182 games, so therefore a full season is, or half a season is 61 games. Only three of those he played less than 61 games, which is kind of impressive for a catcher, I'm not going to lie. Um, he played 1,448 games in his career, had 5,062 at-bats. Um, his lifetime batting average was 296. His lifetime on base percentage was 326. On base percentage is just that. It's how many times you get on base per at bat or whatever. It's um I don't know exactly how you calculate it, but according to Bill James, who kind of came up with the whole moneyball theory ish thing, um, it's more important because yeah. So um, moving on, I had 331 strikeouts. Uh, 585 RBI runs batted in, uh, 65 home runs in his career, which, considering Roger Maris has hit 50 in one season, is not that impressive. Um, 35 stolen bases, and then um, he had 94 fielding-wise. He had 94 errors in 1,114 games at catcher, and then he had 11 errors in the 127 games he had in other positions, excluding the games where he was a DH and therefore did not have to field, which is a stupid rule. I'll probably make a video ranting about that some other time. Um, and then he was a three-time All-Star. Um, whether or not he started, I do not know. Uh, Johnny Bench played for seven, 17 years, uh, two of them were less than half a season. Um, 2,158 games, uh, 7,658 at-bats. Lifetime batting average is 267. Lifetime on base percentage is 342. Um, 1,278 strikeouts. A lot of great hitters if you look at the number of strikeouts they had and then, you know, everything else that tends to correlate that the best hitters had a lot of strikeouts because they swung so much, essentially. Well, unless it's Luke Gehrig because he had a ridiculously low number of strikeouts. It wasn't even funny. Um, 389 home runs, um, wait, no, okay, 1,346 runs added in, and 389 home runs, which is 56 on the all-time list, um, 68 stolen bases, and then moving on to fielding, um, he had 97 errors in his 1,742 games as a catcher and 54 errors in his 451 games at other positions, which is 20% of games that he played. Um, he was in 14 All-Star games. Um, he was in uh, 13 of them consecutive, no, 12 of them consecutively from 1968 to 1980, and then in 1983. And Johnny Bench did. He started in 10 of those 14 All-Star games. Um, and he won um, 10 consecutive gold gloves from 1968 to 1977, gold gloves being fielding awards. He was Rookie of the Year, and he was a two-time MVP. Um, he led the league in home runs twice, and he led the league in RBIs three times. So, and then back to Manny. Um, I don't know if it's mentioned he had 35 career stolen bases. And if you can't tell, catchers aren't known for stealing bases because usually they're slow because their knees are so screwed up from bending up and down every two seconds. Um, anyways, Manny's season averages would be 101 games a season, 389 at bats, a 296 batting average, a 326 on base percentage, five home runs, 45 runs batted in, two stolen bases, 20, and 25 strikeouts. Uh, Johnny Bench. 
averaged 126 games a season, 450 at-bats, a 267 batting average, 342 on base percentage, uh, 23 home runs, 81 runs batted in, 4 stolen bases, and 75 strikeouts. So, in general, just looking at the stats, it's fairly obvious that Johnny Bench was really the better player. I wouldn't compare him to Manny Zingian to a Johnny Bench type of player. Johnny Bench is one of the top three catchers of all time. I would compare uh, Manny Sangian, um kind of, I don't know, Todd Helton more just because of my familiarity with Todd Helton. Um, I mean, Manny never made it to the Hall of Fame. Um, Helton probably will. There are some people, I mean, each elected to All-Star Games, you know, had these great seasons, you know, probably did great things for players, but not quite the best. I mean, I'm still going to remember, um, I mean, you always brag on me, you're like, well, you still don't really know who Manny Singh Ian is. So it's like, I mean, your mom obviously still remembers who he is because she was a big Pirates fan. I'm still going to remember who Helton is in 20, 30, 40 years. But, like, if in 30 years I went up to one of my daughter's friends who happened to be a baseball fanatic and was like, do you know who Todd Helton is? If that person didn't live in Colorado, I'd probably be like, I don't know who he is. Um, but something like that. Um, as for, like, catcher-wise, um, who I compare him to, I guess, I don't know, like, maybe Norbit Torrealba. Or, like, one of the Molina brothers, maybe a little bit. Kind of like that, you know, very steady, very good catcher. I mean, what um, Manny did is basically you want a catcher to do. That's what you want out of a good, solid catcher. That's what you want. Johnny Bench went above and beyond and had first baseman, third baseman, outfielder stats. You know, you don't expect that from your catcher. Oh. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say on the subject, and I'm sure this is not what you expected. I shall see you on Monday.